All right, so we are live. So welcome back, everybody. So we've made it to week nine in the semester. Right? Can you believe it? That we're past the halfway point. Maybe you're like, I can believe it. I'm swamped. Right? So we appreciate all of you taking the time to join us uh, here in person for those here, and then obviously for those uh, online. Um, so as we said before with Misa, we have a mix of company info sessions and then general meetings. So this is one of our, what we consider our general meetings. Um, and so we appreciate Misa uh, letting us uh, sort of crash their Misa sessions for us to talk about, do our shameless plugs about our programs. We feel, we've always felt this is a good audience to, to talk to the group about. So um we definitely uh, appreciate them. So uh, tonight we get to talk about our accelerated um, BBA BS uh, in MIS program to our graduate MIS uh, MSITM program post session. And so um, we do have some in the room that are currently in the program. We have some who have graduated, and obviously we have some that you know are new into MIS or maybe pre-business. And so I think it'll be uh, a good audience to be able to have a mix. Um, and pretty much the biggest thing that we'll talk about in this session is that this is just one of the several options that you have in terms of your pathways to um, your career in graduate school and so on and so forth. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and just dive right in. So let me do some, some introduction. So most of you have been in MISA, you, you're familiar with, with uh, my face, but I'm uh, Dr. Jonathan Sweet, so I am the um, ITOM uh, department uh, program director, and I'm also a senior instructor for our department. Uh, but I'm joined with the real uh, dream. So I'm a part of the dream team, but I'm not really the I, I wouldn't consider myself the starting lineup of, of team. Uh, the real team is our two undergraduate and then also our graduate advisors. So we have our amazing undergraduate um, advisor, uh, Ms. Gilly Rabone. So can we give a nice. Uh, Really? And then our graduate advisor, we have Ms. Michelle Williams. So got to get some love for Michelle. Couldn't do this without the team. So as you see, just like with all the programs, it takes a group of people to be able to put this together. So our hope and our goal for the session today is really just to let you know, hey, this program exists. And then to let you know who are the folks you can reach out to if you want to learn more or if you want to obviously join the program, it'd be great. Um, and that way you know which direction and such to go. So what is the accelerator program? So we have, you know, a couple of folks that are in the program, so they know, like, so we have some of our alum, uh, but really the biggest thing when we talk about the accelerated is a lot of students think, like, what is this, some kind of like ultra speed, fast version to get through everything? Um, and it could be if you want to go that route, but pretty much when we talk about the accelerator program, the other name we have for it is the combined program. So essentially you have the options of getting both your undergraduate degree and your graduate degree together and combined. So you can see it's basically a 150 credit program. You got the 120 credits from undergrad and then you got the 30 credits roughly for uh, grad. So we put those together and essentially you can earn both your undergraduate MIS and your graduate master's in information technology and management in as little as five years, all right? Um, the really cool thing, which actually works better now, uh, in, during COVID times, we had some exceptions for the GMAT GRE. Um, now for our traditional program, GMAT GRE is required. So now the accelerated is even better because now we have some strong distinction uh, where before like you, we had some, some, some uh, flexibility in that piece. But now one of the big pieces that we have is no GRE GMAT. So essentially you don't have to go uh, study for the test. You don't have to take the time to pay for the test. And then, you know, possibly have to take the test again if your score is not low. Um, so that's a great opportunity. And then the other big piece is that you're eligible for our pathway scholarships. So, um, so for the pathway scholarship, it's $2,000 scholarship um, that basically it's through the graduate college that you get. It's pretty much $1,000 when you start and $1,000 to finish the graduate portion within um, the two-year period. And so this is also a joint program that's offered uh, between our department, so within College of Business, and then um, also with the College of Engineering and Computer Science. So that's specifically for the graduate level. So undergrad, all College of Business, uh, the graduate portion, you'll see it's like three quarters College of Business and then one quarter uh, College of Engineering and Computer Science, okay? That is the um, process there. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to the amazing Gilly. And she's gonna <laughs> talk a little bit about the admissions and the undergraduate piece. So take it away, Gilly. Awesome, sure. So in order to, um 
to have the requirements to meet the admissions criteria, you would need to obviously um, select the MIS major um, as well as a concentration. And the two concentrations we offer are cybersecurity and business analytics. You will also need a cumulative undergraduate GPA of 3.0 or higher. Um, and also your MIS courses need to um, all together have a 3.0 or higher GPA. Eventually you will apply um, to the graduate portion of the program and um, this will include uh, why do you want to enter the program and obtain your MSITM and what areas of interest in IT do you want to develop for your career? What are your career goals and do you want to uh, and what do you want to achieve after graduation? Awesome. So obviously your first step, where, where would you start? You would um, schedule hopefully an appointment with me and I'll go over your, your file and see if you qualify for the program. I'll also discuss um, you know, the courses that are required for the program, as well as obviously your, your bachelor degree and also uh, give you an overview of cybersecurity and business analytics. Uh, and then obviously your next step would eventually, as I walk you through the program, you generally by your junior year, many times it does um, happen by the senior year because we are waiting for you to have a certain set of classes completed before you apply. And then of course, I will refer you to Michelle Williams and she will also go over um, your file to see if you qualify. Uh, basically the, the five courses we're looking for uh, in order to review your file, include um, ISM 3011, which is Management Info Systems. It's part of the business core as well. And basically almost all our business programs uh, do require that course. Uh, this course, as you can see, is offered every semester, spring, summer, and fall. Then we have um, the under the IT path, the programming uh, course uh, where you will use Java and ISM 30, 3230. It is offered um, also spring, summer, and fall. Uh, data communications, ISM 4220. Once again, it's offered all three semesters. And database, uh, ISM 4212. This one as well is offered all three semesters. The one that we have to always watch out for is ISM 4133, system analysis, because it's not offered every semester. And that course also requires that you have nine credits of MIS courses to take it as well. So uh, that's why it's so important that you do meet with me each semester so that we can work out a schedule to ensure that you're gonna meet the criteria in a timely manner. Awesome. All right, last one, Gilly. Okay. <laughs> All right, so when do you apply? As I mentioned briefly before, you, uh, ideally it's during your junior year, but as long as uh, we get you into the program before your final semester, uh, we do everything we can to, to make sure it works out for you. Obviously, if you're a senior, um, you know, definitely see me um, before your final semester. What if you've already submitted your application uh, for a degree? Unfortunately, you may not be eligible for the program. And of course, this is something, you know, we discuss and go over just to ensure uh, you have the best opportunity to get accepted. Um, and, and once again, most importantly, just schedule an appointment with me, send me an email, uh, let me know as soon as you know that you're interested in the program. All right, we did have one question in here, so. Yes. I'll, I'll relay it if you can't hear. Um, where would we go to schedule an appointment with you? Uh, where would they go to schedule an appointment with you? Yeah, it, just under the, the general um, navigate system, um, basically under your success network. Uh, there should be a link on there where you can make an appointment with me. Um, if you're, because we're using a, a new system, if you're having some difficulty setting up an appointment, just send me an email and I'll send you the instructions. And then I can show them when we finish. I'm sure they have it updated on the College of Business like advising page, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So if not, you can just email me at grabone at feu.edu and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll send you the link um, to, to schedule the appointment. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, Gilly. All right. So now we turn it over to the amazing Michelle, the tag team. I apologize if there is some background noise. Life happens, but I really wanted to be here to meet with you. I had planned on being in person, so please bear with me. It's all good. So once a student has been approved with um, 
Gilly, that you've met the undergraduate requirements and you are in a good position to be considered for the graduate portion of the application process, then she'll send you to meet with me. So Gilly and I tag team students. You talk to Gilly, she lets me know this particular student is interested. You know, she gives me a brief rundown on, you know, the qualifications that they have and that they're ready to see me to apply to the program. So students are required to apply online, right? There's a specific question on the application that asks you if you are a current undergraduate student applying to the combined program. It's important that you check that off um, and then select whichever uh, concentration you'd like to be considered for. Because if you don't, then you go into the pool with all the other students that are waiting for test scores. So we might email you and say, hey, Jim, we received your application, but we haven't received your test scores. If that happens, is it the end of the world? No, you just need to reach out to one of us and let us know that, hey, I need the, my application for um, the combined program. So it's a simple fix, but um, it's easier and, and less confusing if you just um, are able to apply and identify yourself at the time of the application. And we don't have to add extra work for anybody to fix yes. anything. Right? <laughs> awesome. So application and deadlines um, and fees. Currently, the graduate college application fee is waived. So um, they are working to make that permanent for students who are interested in the combined program. So you should not have to worry about that $30 application fee. As far as deadlines, we have some flexibility. So these are our standard deadlines. However, if you're speaking with Gilly or myself, we will make sure that you submit that application in time. We have situations where students are waiting for final grades or uh, might be borderline. So, you know, just rely on either myself or Gilly in those particular situations. You're going to be applying for the semester after graduation. So if you're a senior and your last semester is fall of 2023, then you would be applying for the next subsequent semester, which would be spring of 2024. Oh, well, you're on mute, uh, Michelle. All right, once you're accepted to the accelerated program, um, you will take your bridge course. So for most students, that's going to be ISM 6405. We do have a substitute if for some reason the student is accepted late or that particular course is not offered. So we do everything to accommodate students and make sure that they can get into the correct class, regardless of what sense uh, semester they apply. So we're like magicians, we make it happen. As long as you meet the admissions requirements, we do our best on our end to make it happen for a student. So you are going to have to make sure that you submit your application for a degree for your undergraduate degree program. We have had that student happen where a student forgot, but you need to submit an application for your undergrad and then a separate application for your master's program. So once you graduate from Gilly and your BBA, then you become solely mine and we will work through to complete your master's degree and make sure that you um, graduate when you're supposed to. Now, 3.0 is the minimum threshold in order to be considered um, for the program, as well as you have to maintain that throughout the program. And then when you're a graduate student, a 3.0 is actually the minimum to stay in good academic standing. So that's why that 3.0 admission criteria is so important. Um, at the undergrad, 2.0 is fine to be in academic standing. We expect more from you out of graduate school. So you have to maintain a 3.0. I got two, two more, Michelle. Okay. I'm sorry. So um, I think, Gilly, you want to start with the top two, and then I'll finish nice. at the bottom. Nice. Sure. Yeah, so as we briefly mentioned, Part of the criteria uh, to get into the program, you will need to not only follow the IT path, uh, but you will also need to select a concentration. So as you can see, cybersecurity, these are the four courses uh, for, for the cybersecurity concentration. 
you'd be taking ISM 4324, which is computer forensics. And if you note, it is only offered spring and fall. So we always have to get a little creative when putting your schedule together, because in the summer, not every um, course is offered. Uh, ISM 4323, which is info assurance security, also once again, spring and fall. And then um, ISM 4320, which is intro, the intro to cybersecurity course, spring and fall. And then we do have a couple of substitutes, uh, which you know we can talk about individually uh, when you when you are doing your scheduling, uh, as well as for business analytics. Um, these are the listed uh, courses: ISM 3116, which is intro to business analytics. It is a prereq as well. Uh, to um, some of the classes. So it's important you get this one early. ISM 4117 data mining, also spring and fall, and then ISM 4420 um, social media and web analytics, which has actually become a fairly popular course. So, um, you know, this one once again, spring and fall, or you have the option to do the digital data management, ISM 4041. And if you know, all of them are only offered during spring and fall. Awesome. Uh, once you move over to um, the graduate side of things, like we see the bridge courses yeah. there mentioned, ISM 6405 and QMB 6303, then your next subsequent semester, it is going to be extremely important that you register for business communications. Okay, that's a prerequisite, co-requisite to a lot of classes in the program. So I know you all know how important it is to meet with your undergraduate advisor. It's equally important, if not more important, to meet with your graduate advisor. Every class is not offered every single semester. So meeting with us is gonna ensure that we keep you on track. Um, ITOM is one of those programs that's always on the cutting edge, making updates, adding new options for students. So they tell us these things first, Yes, you're emailed and, you know, that information is sent out to you, but, you know, I feel like there is nothing that can replace the conversations that we have with students. So, um, you know, what we do during your first appointment as a graduate student is we work on a plan of study, we find out what your needs are, how many classes you want to take, and then we plan out a schedule for you. So depending on the semester that you're admitted, whether you want to be full-time or part-time, GEB is going to be the number one class that you have to take. And then we'll work on the other classes based on your situation. Awesome. We had uh, one question in the class here. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, what's the difference between this business communication and the business communication I'm taking right now? So she's asked yeah, about what's the difference between the business communication and undergrad and the one in grad. So I don't know if you want me to you want me to talk about that one or you want you want to take that one. Um seeing as though I just completed my semester of business communications this summer. <laughs> congrats, congrats. I can speak a little bit to that. Your business yeah. communications is an intro business communications course. Mm -hmm. So they give you assignments, they expect you to complete those assignments, and then you are tested on that knowledge. Some of the same uh, concepts you'll see again in the business communications course, there's going to be a heavy emphasis on group projects. There's going to be a heavy emphasis on presenting. Even myself, who, you know, I thought I was a seasoned presenter, I definitely saw some quirks and things that I needed to change about myself as a presenter. Um, so they touch on that as well as, um, you know, formulating arguments, being persuasive, getting your point across in a business environment. So the other uh, different thing about the, the courses is the graduate business course actually follows you throughout the curriculum. So at first they want you to, they give you all the information you need to know to be successful. And then through your courses in the program, they want you to show, hey, I've mastered these skills. Here it is. I've had this assignment in my course that um, shows that I have been competent in an oral presentation and then a research paper. So um, think of it as your undergrad class on steroids. <laughs> he said, oh my goodness. So <laughs> It's fun though. I mean, and I have so many students that have said like that class really helped them and put everything in perspective as a professional. So 
There you go. Everyone has mixed uh, mixed emotions on that one, but overall, <laughs> like Michelle said, the goal is to make you better in your communication on all aspects. So just like anything, it takes work, it takes effort, but when you finish it, you're going to be happy you did because you're going to be a better communicator on all fronts. So, mm -hmm. awesome. Absolutely. So, all right, last one for you, Michelle. And then sure. You so then break. depending on your concentration, these are the required courses for you. Um, the ITM concentration offers some more flexibility. Uh, the business analytics concentration, um, all of your courses are going to be related to business analytics. There is some overlap. So sometimes students won't decide until the second or third semester. And sometimes that's okay, but you need to let me know, hey, I'm, I'm thinking between these two, you know, this is my first semester. What can I take that's applicable to both concentrations? Usually at that point, I send you to meet with Dr. Sweet, you know, hey, give them the, give them the um, concentration package. They wanna know the difference. They want some career outlook. And he definitely helps students in kind of narrowing down which concentration would be better for you. Both programs do require those three College of Engineering electives. And through the department's work, they've done a great job at um, partnering with the College of Engineering to identify electives and professors that are the best fit for our college students. So be sure that you follow the recommendations. They come out um, every semester prior to registration. Um, I can't tell you what a difference that has made for our students in selecting courses that are appropriate for their skill level as well as their interests. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the students that are here in the program now are shaking their heads on that on that point because there was there were some times where things were a little bit difficult, but that's where the communication channel between those of you as students and us as staff and faculty is critical because it's hard for us to be able to know what's going on in every single classroom unless the students are letting us know. So we try to accommodate as best as we can, um, you know, to make it as smooth for, for everybody. And thankfully, this is one of those areas where we've been able to make these adjustments. And it's really, like I said, I agree with Michelle as well. It's made a, a significant difference. So awesome. So thanks so much. Michelle, yes, so their, their uh, suggestion in the class here is please make sure you stick with the recommended College of Engineering and Computer Science classes. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a true statement right there. So very true uh, knowledge right there from some seasoned uh, accelerated program folk, all right? Um, so thanks to, to both of you. So now uh, talk a little bit about our internship for credit class. So this class, we have it both at the undergraduate and graduate level. So if you're interested, um, in doing an internship, or if you have an internship, or if you're saying, hey, I wanted to do an internship, um, you can actually do your internship and then get course credit for it at the same time, which is uh, really great. At the undergraduate level, it's a little bit more challenging because as you saw, you have to choose the IT path for MIS, and then you have to choose the concentration. Mm -hmm. So the number of sort of free electives you have floating around are limited, um, but that's still an option. We do um, provide some options in terms of course substitution if you are able to find an internship that matches a course specifically you can talk with one of the advisors on submitting a petition to see if our apartment chair would approve on um, that substitution uh, but at the graduate level a lot more um, convenient in terms of making it work with your schedule because we have essentially every course except your core classes and the college of engineering classes um, you can actually substitute that internship for credit class for uh, the courses in the program. And so that makes it uh, very helpful. And especially for those of you who are working full time, I know it's hard um, to be able to do an internship and working full time. And that's another accommodation that we're able to provide to try to see if we can work with your current employer to find um, a special project for you to work on or, um, you know, uh, some kind of special initiative to you be a part of that's outside of your normal day to day operations. So that way we can get you to learn, but at the same time get the course credit. So that's offered every semester. But I think the most popular time for anybody to take advantage of it is the summer. Um, so that's one of the suggestions if you're trying to figure out when to use the internship or credit class, summer is ideal because unfortunately, fortunately, a lot of the faculty were off for the summer uh, for research. So there's probably a half, maybe of the quarter of the classes that are normally offered fall, spring in the summer. So you don't wanna try to, you gotta try to plan with your advisors strategically so that way 
you can have the classes that are available in the summer and not be like, oh, I should have taken that in the spring and then delays your graduation. But obviously work with your advisors. They'll try to accommodate as best as we can. But, you know, Michelle and Gilly are great mag magicians, but even great magicians have limitations. So um, that's that piece. So that's our internship credit. So Daniel, you had another question? Oh, no. I answered it. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of covered. So yeah. So spring, summer, and fall. So pick your pick your choice, but really the ideal is summer if you can do it. All right. Um, so the next is our pathway scholarship. So the pathway, I say ours, but it's through the graduate college. Um, so here it's a $2,000 scholarship that you're eligible just for being in the combined program. Um, so essentially you have to be in the combined program. You have to basically comp complete your undergraduate version of the portion, your first increment. And basically they break it up into two parts. So you get $1,000 um, during the first semester and $1,000 your last semester of the graduate program. So um, here there's um, an application that you would be able to fill out to be able to go that route. And even I've heard from some of them that now some things are automatically applied, but this is something that's just eligible only for the combined or accelerated student. So it's a great um, additional perk. And so I think for both of you, did, did that work for you, Jonathan and all too? Yeah, so all my current accelerated here, they're shaking their heads saying it worked, right? So everybody could use some free money, right? So. All right, and we have a couple of them uh, here, and we talk about success stories. Um, I have to add some additional ones in. It's on my to-do list, but I have to always reach out to the students and say, hey, you've graduated, you have a great job, fill out this form so I can create these things for you. Um, so these are the last ones I have. So obviously, you know some of these folk. This is our uh, amazing uh, Mr. Shannon Stewart here in the class with us, right? So we're uh, excited to have him. Um, and then some of you know uh, here, Professor Campbell, right? another uh, shining star of the uh, program. Um, so he's in there. And then obviously you can see there's tons of them. If you were at the barbecue with us um, this, this past um, couple of weeks, uh, Jessica was actually here. She's one of our alums from, from a while back, uh, but it's really just a great uh, program. And you can see a lot of our graduates go on to really amazing careers. Um, and that's a real testimony, not just to the program, but also to the students and their hard work. So um, this is just a little bit of a, of a kudos for for those uh, those few, and this is just a small little list. I could go on with the whole list. I could go on LinkedIn and pull everybody up, and they're all doing really uh, amazing things. So here's just a quick snapshot of a couple of them. And then obviously we know Misa, right? Woo, Misa. Woo, yeah, no, my folk here. I had a really good here. Everybody likes Misa. That's what we're in right now, right? So. Obviously, Mesa is a great uh, opportunity for you to be able to not only network with your peers, uh, because as you've seen, um, or maybe as you've seen as you've been here, right, it's a great way to be able to get in those group projects at the graduate level when you're with some folks that, you know, you kind of know how they work and um, you've kind of gotten some time to meet with them and kind of see how their personalities are. And then obviously being able to connect with the different companies and such that we have. And then our uh, social events and other things we have. We just had the company tour uh, last Friday at SBA Communications. So there's a lot of really great things that's going on. Um, so the more things you can be involved in, right, the better things can be in terms of your, uh, not just your professional career, but also your personal um, path as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open up for questions. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Stop the recording.